This is our world, our streets, our war, our lives. This is what we fight for, our choice. We're the voice of the globe. Turn up the volume so everybody knows. This is our world, our streets, our war, our lives. This is what we fight for, our choice. To make the wrong things right with our voice. We bring day to the night. This is our world, our streets, our war. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 55th edition of UWE Lockdown, but this could very well be the final episode of Lockdown in the history of Backyard Wrestling. This is Jack Thomas signing in here live and to kick off the show, Jason Atlas, the man formerly known as the One Man Mosh Pit, but seems that Jason Atlas has gone through quite a disease as of late, as he likes to call it. Atlas, I don't know why Atlas is out here now, TJ though. TJ Sakara. <laughs> you know, that day, the lockdown before Ultimate Redemption, I was not lying when I said that you, you weren't my friend, that I said I didn't have any friends. Because I heard you. I heard you mutter in the background, that's a lie. No. The only lie was that I said that these fans, these stupid wastes of pathetic life, these fans were my friends. These fans aren't my friends. I don't have any friends. And you know what, TJ? I don't need any friends. You need friends. You need people like Rick Rios or whoever you're working with to elevate your career. I don't need anyone. I was the one man mosh pit. Key word, one man. You ain't nothing but the backstabbing bitch. You know what? When we would train and you were in my corner, that, that was awesome. That was awesome back then. But then you got too busy. Didn't you, TJ? You got too busy with your own shit. I didn't need you anymore. I don't need someone to elevate my career. I let emotions get in the way. I don't have any emotions left. All these losses, they've elevated me. What's your excuse? What's your excuse to all your losses? Your emotions this time. It's gonna be your emotions that's your downfall. The disease of Atlas will infect you just as it's infected me. And you're the one who's gonna break. Jason Atlas has a clear vendetta against TJ Sakara, but I think he's targeting the wrong man in my eyes. TJ is scheduled at Endgame to have a match against Yankee, the difference maker for the Underground Championship. Jason Atlas is scheduled to face Edward Creed later on tonight, and all those losses against Creed, not TJ, but Edward Creed, have made Jason Atlas to what he is today. I have no idea why Jason Atlas is targeting his anger and his frustration towards a man that has been by his side. This is great prop placement. I wonder who put this in. The entire time. Take a seat, bud. Take a seat. But ask and you shall receive. I heard you talking in the back. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, boy, Atlas, where do I begin? Where do I begin? You defeated the demons, right? You defeated the demons. You want to mean something. You want to be somebody. You want to. You want to be a champion, right? Right? You want your girlfriend to be proud of you, right? That's what it is, right? But, but. <laughs> Here's the reason why she won't be proud of you. Here's the reason why you won't be a champion. It's because you're gonna be in a match with me. Who knows you better than me, Atlas? Guy who trained you, guy who was in your corner. The guy that backed you up, posting videos of you dancing around like an idiot, mosh pitting by yourself 
on Twitter. Me promoting you. I was promoting you. I was the one that had your back. And yet, everybody needs to get over the fact that Rick Reels betrayed me. It freaking happens. I'm over it. Why can't everybody else be over it? Just to name plug me? Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, it's like, it's like you want to be a champion. You want to you be a success. You want to hold a championship because you felt like you never held a championship before. Well, guess what, buddy? You're not going to hold a championship now. Because I'm holding it. This title, you think this is just something to hold, just to something to keep as a trophy? No, no, no. The word underground means more than the word championship. That's a fact. That's a fact. The word underground means more. And you don't mention the underground without TJ Sakara. I don't know, Atlas. I don't know. You say I you say I betrayed you. You say I stabbed you in the back. You say this, you say that. But really, you're the only person to blame. You're the only person to blame, Atlas. You want to know why you're the only person to blame? Because your emotion, you show too much emotion. You let all the little voices in your head, you let everything that has to do with the outside world get to you. Which is why I'm going to win. It's because I can control my emotions. I can put a wall from the outside world and when I step in that ring, I'm not TJ Eastland. No, 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 I'm TJ Sakara, The body of bewilderment, the third eye theorist. The reason why you're gonna fail, Atlas, one thing, emotion. Because every single time you let your emotions get to you, you failed. Started with Ultimate Redemption 1 when you faced Black Bullet. You lost, you wanna know why? Because you got too emotional. Every single step throughout your career, the reason why you lost or you couldn't get an edge on the competition is because of your emotion. You're too emotional. The reason why you're gonna fail is because you're emotional. The reason why you failed... I don't wanna go there. I don't wanna do it, TJ. Don't do it. Don't do it. Nope, don't do it. Nope, you're a good guy. You're a good guy. Don't do it. I'm gonna do it. Nope. No. Don't do it. I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. I'm not gonna... The reason why you fail when you're emotional is because every single time a little something happened, a little something happened, whether it was a bad thing, a horrible thing, whatever, your emotions got to you. That's why every single time you picked up a bottle again, oh, he did you it. got emotional. Oh, he did it. So here's a test for you. Let's see if your emotions get to you at Endgame, because I promised I promised Yankee in the back that there would be nobody added to the match. But for some reason, you still want to be in the match. Well, congratulations, Atlas. You're in the match. Against me and Yankee for the Underground Championship. Let's see if you can learn from the teacher. Because remember who the teacher was, and that was me. Oh, Yankee the Difference Maker is not going to like that. The student's about to become the teacher. Yankee wanted a one-on-one, -on -one, but he had a feeling that a madman was running loose, that this would not be one-on-one, -on -one, and Yankee was exactly right. So at Endgame, we are not going to see a one-on-one -on -one match. We are going to see a triple threat for the Underground Championship. TJ Sakara, the Underground Champion, will be facing challengers, not only Yankee, the maestro of the Murder Club, the man that was in the main event of Best in the Yard 3, but also TJ Sakara's, well, you could consider him a student, Jason Atlas, who has now become infested with the disease of Atlas. But also at Endgame, we are gonna see another match. We are gonna see Johnny Reed versus Revan. Two weeks ago on lockdown, 
Revan would defeat Jason Atlas, but then he was attacked by none other than Johnny Reed. And last week, Reed laid out the challenge that I made Revan relevant in the UWE. And at Endgame, I'm gonna do it once again. Issued the challenge to the Prodigal Knight. Speaking of Revan, here he comes now. And this has got to be a very emotional Revan because this could be the very last time that Revan ever says any words in the underground because of what is going on now with Everett Creed and Gustavo. The UWE could be coming to an end. This could be Revan's final time on lockdown. It's just hard to believe it. Kill the music! This could be the end. I feel like Revan is gonna really lay it out here. After everything that has happened, after everything I have been through, my thoughts have not changed. When I started here in the UWE, I was an immovable object. I wasn't as good as I thought I was, and I was put in my place, and you know what? I needed to. I was beaten, battered, broken. I didn't know what I should do. I had people telling me that no one was taking me seriously. The fans didn't take me seriously. I was a joke to them. The gimmick, my idealisms, what I believed in, I should just surrender it, give it up, that I was nothing but a joke. And I thought maybe they were right. Maybe I didn't belong here. Maybe what I thought, I should just give in and do what everybody told me. I thought, and I thought, and I thought about what I wanted to do. What would make these people out here happy. And when Jace, when Jason Atlas said to me that they didn't care about me, it hurt. Because you know what? At one point I thought that was true. That no one out there cared. No, we care. But then I realized that people do. Yeah. yeah. My idealisms are not jokes. They are what I believe in. They are what make me strong. They are what make me, me. We follow me! We follow me! No one will take this from me. It is who I am. You can say what you want. You can joke. I don't care. My goal, my job, is to come out here every single week, entertain you people, break my body if I have to, and I am willing to, and I have proved that. And now, after everything I've been through, after proving myself, someone comes out here and calls me a joke. I thought we were past this, but I guess we were wrong. What have I done recently? Let's, let's go down the line. I said it last time. I faced Dirty to Chico. Yes, I lost, but I said something in that match. I'm not just someone you can knock around to get an easy win. I'm someone that you have to stand and fight against. Then I took on Joe Cool, and I saw the good in him. And hopefully he stays with that. And then the man that plans on destroying everything at the next show, when he faced me, I made him crawl at my feet. And I'm going to do the same thing to Johnny Reed. I'm going to break him. I'm going to make sure people understand that the name Revan is not something you joke around with. That when you see this mask, it means war. And it means the end for you. No one will stand in my way anymore. You can stand by my side, get out of my way, or crawl at my feet. I will be victorious. Strong words by Revan. Very, very strong words. And if it is the end of the UWE, that is the perfect way to go out on. I'm gonna win for you people! Yeah.
That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a leader. A leader of the pack. And a damn shame, because he could have been one hell of a champion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for some action here on UWE Lockdown. Jason Atlas here to be taking on the man that he has lost time and time again to. The man that plans to end the UWE ever in Creed. But now Jason Atlas has been granted an opportunity to compete at Endgame for the Underground Championship. But here tonight, he's got to put that aside and focus on Creed. If he can really do some damage to Creed, maybe Ustalon could stand a chance. It may seem hopeless, but there could be a glimmer. Creed said on Twitter that he has a surprise for Jason Atlas here tonight on UWE Lockdown. Can only imagine what that's going to be. We're going to take a quick break, though. When we come back, we're going to see Jason Atlas versus Everett Creed here on Lockdown. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Everett Creed here to give you a brief update on what's going on with the UWE. It's ending. And it could very well end if this man defeats Ustalol. Everett Creed, the self-supremacy, who's facing Jason Atlas right here, right now, but Creed said he had a surprise for Jason Atlas here tonight. We're gonna find out exactly what the, oh my God, it is true. Alongside Edward Creed, his fiance, the supreme leader of the Stark supremacy, Angelique Stark. And the Stark supremacy is completed. So not only does Atlas have to worry about Creed, but now, Angelique Stark as well. Not a woman to be taken lightly. Everett Creed gains a, a special amount of confidence when his employer, his supreme leader, as he likes to state, has arrived alongside Everett Creed. Realized it finally? Did I finally get inside your head? That you couldn't Alice, save are you ready? yourself? Atlas, now look at that. Atlas going right after Creed. <laughs> and now these two are both not too well liked, but I think, I think Atlas is the one to receive a D. Maybe if Atlas can defeat Creed here tonight, we may see the old Jason Atlas again. 
Atlas has really been relentless as of late since he was screwed out of the World Heavyweight Championship back at Dead Man's Hand last year by the hands of Everett Creed. Atlas is supposed to face Everett Creed at All Out Survival. That didn't go out as planned because Everett Creed sent Jason Atlas away to a rehabilitation clinic. Atlas redeemed and wanted revenge at Thunderstruck. But Creed would get the victory Seven. there as well, defeating Atlas with what he calls the end game. Eight. Creed definitely taking his time. I don't know. Watch yourself, man. Oh, look at Creed now throwing the shirt, gaining an advantage, an undermined advantage. But you can see Creed coming in with the southpaw. Big advantage there for the self supremacy, and that clothesline is something Ustalo has got to worry about. Creed and Ustalo are going to have a contract signing. Later on tonight to confirm their match at Endgame. No funny business at the actual event. Creed doesn't back out or nothing like that. Jericho. And uh, oh, nice drop kick there by Jason Atlas. Atlas, I'm sure, has wanted a piece of Ever Creed for the longest time now. But this is a different Atlas, I can promise you. I'm not gonna warn you again. Creed is blinded right now. And now Atlas striking away on the self-supremacy. Who is accompanied now by Angelique Stark. Can't beat me now. And this is the side of Jason Atlas that... I don't feel happy. One. I don't feel sad. This is... Three! And I don't feel angry. This is oh. a disturbing I'm young man now. It was open. Atlas is all, was all together, but <laughs> not anymore. Open. And that referee does not look amused oh. with Atlas talking back to him. Referee calling it clean. Oh. And now Jason oh. Atlas has oh. clean and an arm wrencher and a nice Close heel kick. The foot. Oh. And now Jason oh, Atlas no has the advantage. Oh over his arch nemesis, if you will, and Creed gets the shoulder up. And this is gonna be extra challenging now for Jason Atlas, because like I said, when Angelique Stark is present in Ever Creed's corner, he he takes it up a notch. Oh wait, Atlas there misses. Oh, and a chop block by Creed, and this is what Creed's dangerous. Taking advantage of when you make a slight mistake. No one does that better in the UWE than Creed. A former world the champion. King of the Bow! And now Creed. You like to scream, huh? King of the Bow! Creed mocking Atlas. Is that your. Is that your new Those face? hard kicks. King of the Bow! What's in the top? It's a Yaya Tata! Well, I'm glad Creed's having fun. I can tell you Atlas isn't. And Atlas is not amused by Creed mocking him. Atlas has Creed by the throat, and down goes the supremacy. And now, oh, there's that heel clicking drop kick there. And now Atlas taking Creed down again. Everett Creed realized that, you know, maybe after Ustalo defeated Atlas last week, Creed wants to say anything you can do, I can do better. I am playing by the rules. You can't hit me, ref. What you can't hit him. You cannot. Oh, come on. That's Creed using the rope saying that Atlas couldn't hit him. Meanwhile, Creed was pretty much playing tag along across the entire rectangle with the with the freaking rope. How's that fair? Oh, look out. Oh, that's what Creed calls deep in the river of sticks. And Everett Creed now. Yeah, let's go. Tributing to Angelique Stark. And now here comes that elbow. Right to the abdomen, and here's the cover, and Atlas gets the shoulder up. And now Creed is the one that is not amused. Ever Creed, you might as well stop. What? Screw the back fist. Here comes the Mongolian Joe. Oh, well now I'll say I'm glad Atlas is having fun, because Creed's not. Damn, nasty kick right to the side of the temple. Jason Atlas now may be looking for a power driver. Creed counters, and this is this is dangerous. This is ever Creed's Genesis device. The submission that Creed put on Atlas to win the UW World Heavyweight Championship. Is that what you're saying? I said. And Atlas is man. This, uh, Atlas is uh, definitely unorthodox. 
I could say the least, kick to the, the back. Ropes. And Cree, oh, Cree came back with a spinning back fist. That is a Jason Atlas maneuver, and Everett Creed used it in his own repertoire. Creed does that a lot. He'll like to steal his opponent's maneuvers. And now Creed, I thought he was going for an elbow, goes for a cover instead. Creed may be getting a little too confident with Stark by his side. You've seen Creed have a lot of people that come out to his assistance. Creed now, look out, went for the boot. Atlas counters this, a wall of death. Atlas hits the wall of death. One, two, and Creed gets the shoulder up. Well, like I said, we've seen a lot of people in Creed's corner. We've seen Adnan, we've seen REF. We've seen Angelique Stark. Everett Creed is a man of many resources. As you can see, he calls himself the god of the underground. Creed countered the backstabber, and now Creed trying to set up Atlas, setting him up for the end game. This could be it. Atlas moves out of the way. Atlas with a chop right to the top of the head. Creed is still up, though, and there's a backstabber. Creed's 238-pound body falling right over Atlas. Atlas could be setting up for the finish. Oh, wait, there's the nightshade. Atlas stealing Creed's own move now. And Creed gets Don't his break. foot on the rope. <laughs> Everett Creed stole Atlas's back fist. Atlas stole Everett Creed's nightshade. Yeah, that's, that's another word for it. No, this is good. And now Atlas setting up. This could be the end here. If Atlas can defeat Everett Creed, that would be a huge set of momentum for Ustalo at Endgame as well as Jason Atlas in his underground championship match. But I think Creed has just regained control. Creed now going to set up for the Endgame. Atlas moves. Atlas now. Oh, that was a knee right to the temple. And I think Creed is out cold. Oh, wait, no, Creed coming back. Shot to the leg. What a shot to the leg, and Atlas is down, and Creed mocking the fans. Oh, you gotta love him. <laughs> you gotta love him. You gotta love the UW audience. There's a leg drop to the back of the head. Uslo's gotta be watching on. Creed getting very overconfident in himself. I hate you too. I think Creed now may be setting up for the end. Creed now with a leg scissors. And I think he may watch the watch the hands now. You gotta watch out for those hands. Ever Creed ended the live stream for UWE last week. Angelique Stark gave Ever Creed access. Look at that now, Creed clawing the face. We even seen Creed chin with lock. the access of his cellular device able to turn the screen black. Like we said, we don't know what Creed has in power. Atlas now setting up for the, the head hunt. Creed counters. Creed's got a roll up. Creed's got a roll up. And, oh, Atlas had the ropes. I think Creed would have had him if he didn't have, if Atlas didn't have the ropes. Creed may have had him there. No, you didn't. Damn it. And Creed is Two. definitely oh. not happy. God damn it. Creed is not amused. Oh, you son of a bitch. Reload. Reload. Creed took advantage of the ring ropes Please earlier. Push. Jason Please Atlas push. now is going to do bitch. the same. And now Everett Creed setting up. Maybe for oh, wait, no, Atlas for the roll up. Atlas for the roll up. Oh, my God. I thought Jason Atlas had him there. That could have been really, really close. If Atlas could defeat Creed here tonight, that would be so much momentum going into Endgame. Like I said, not only for Atlas, but for Ustalo as well. These two trading bombs. Looks like Atlas is getting the advantage. Creed took advantage and oh, the Endgame! And it's over. Wait a minute, Creed not going for the cover. Creed now, look at this, setting up for the end game once again, and there it is. Remember, Ustalo hit a, a number mine, of Ustalo. One, two, Ustalo hit a number three. of scorches on on Atlas last week. Creed trying to play one upmanship. Everett Creed wins this match against Jason Atlas.
And this is gonna be momentum. Maybe that glimmer of hope is gone. Come on out and say hello, Derek. I'm here, Lucius. You mentioned my father last week. You know, no one has ever had the audacity to ever bring up my past. That's why I exposed it to you in those interview tapes before our epic Buried Alive match. But I'm not out here to pick a fight. I'm not out here to even do my little shtick and start rubbing you off. Oh, you best believe we're gonna fight for that end game. Oh yeah, no, I'm not in here to fight. I'm here for the diplomatic discussion. I'm can be professional. Of course. We're leading to end games, the big fight. I know what it's about. You don't know what I know, dearie. All this is just a trick. You really think that this is the end? I don't think, Lucius. I know it is. Novan, I remember when you walked out in the Survivalist Coliseum and I looked into your cold eyes. I can see it. What a flashback. <laughs> and I realized that you were definitely special, but I still took you a little lightly. Still took you lightly. I even captured and tamed your precious Tabitha. Do not remind me of that, or this discussion is over and I will lay you where you stand. Let me ask you something. What is it about Tabitha? In all honesty, I just want to know. She's everything. You wouldn't know anything about that. You have no one who cares for you. No one who likes you. Everybody thinks you're a freak because that's what you are. You're not meant to be in this world. You're not meant to be in the ring with me. You are beneath me, Lucius. That's where you're wrong. Tabitha is everything to me. That's where you're wrong. I am meant to be in the ring with you, but I was wrong too. I thought you were just another man. I thought that you were just a pretender to the cow of the devil, but I can see you and I, we have something exclusive. Is that right? Indeed. Because the last emotion in the freak show, everyone's talking. We're not even the main event, but yet we are the big dance. Because Novin and Lips is a tale of two demons fighting for the precious throne of hell. And I have to say that I have been definitely looking forward to this. This whole game between us. After all, giving you a kiss on ultimate redemption. Exercising you out of your son's vessel. Only for you to return and put me in a shallow grave where you believed I would remain, then no. Oh, ain't no grave can hold my body down. Cute. And you're insatiable. We're more like each other than we think. <clears throat> I refuse to die, and you refuse to be done with me. We're more like each other than we realize. We're just like Adam and Eve, only the other way around. But still, all this is wrong. The end of the game. Because it's gonna be put to an end? I don't think so. This is just a trick. And you will see soon enough. But Novin, I've never been, ever, brought to my own knees. And I have never thought twice about another man until you. Hmm. And unlike the other dolls that I play with, I actually have respect for you. And I think I actually may have feelings for you. Oh, oh that warms my heart. <laughs> I lie. 
The feelings are mutual, Lucius. I don't like you, I don't respect you, and I sure as hell don't fear you. Well, maybe we aren't all alike because I do fear you. But I think that's what I love about you. <laughs> May the best. May the best man win. He will. My God, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally gonna see the end. The final chapter between Lips and Novin, and I gotta say, that was very uncharacteristic out of both Novin and Lips to be so civil with one another. But they have been through hell and back. Like Lips said, Lips kissing Novin and exercising his soul at ultimate redemption only for Lips to be buried alive at the hands of Novin and Broken Glory. It will come to an end at Endgame. But also, the fate of UWE is on the line because Everett Creed with Angelique Stark, the Stark supremacy, will be facing Ustolo for the fate of UWE if Ustolo somehow can defeat Creed and Stark. The UWE will be saved, but if every Creed is victorious, it will be the end of underground wrestling entertainment. We're going to take you now to the contract signing between the Stark Supremacy and Ustalo. You wanted me, Creed? Here I am. Very well. Take a seat. What is this, some sort of contract signing? Actually, yeah, it is. You see, what you wanted was an opportunity to save UWE. What you wanted was to do it for you. What I want is gonna happen. I'm going to save you, I'm going to beat you at the end game, and that's just what's gonna happen. You know, for the longest time, I really didn't understand why exactly you decided to surrender the only bit of legacy that you had left in the UWE, the Underground Championship. But then, it just shows, it just goes to show that behind every great man is a great woman. Because right here, Miss Stark had to inform me the real truth. You're not doing this for what it's about. This isn't about what it is. This is about you. It's about me. It is true that I usually do things for the best of myself, and whatever helps me, I'll do. But without the UWE, there is no Ustalo. Without the Ustalo, there is no UWE. Here's the fact. You do what we can do without you. It can't do without me. Oh, All right? Wrong. Here's the thing. You made me give up my title as a stipulation for a match. I have a bit of a stipulation myself. You see, I've seen in your past matches REF come out and help you, help Cameron Jackson, help people who are like in his favor, I might say. My stipulation is that he's going to be banned from ringside. There's going to be no Aria. It's just going to be you and me for the fate of the UWE. That's where you're wrong, Uslo. Because you banned the wrong person. You could ban Aria if all you want. The fact is, you're knocking on the door. You don't want to answer. Aria may not be on my corner, but Miss Angelique Stark will be. I'm not worried. Come on. Whoa, whoa, before you, don't you, under, don't you want to understand what this is all about? This isn't about what you're doing, it's about who you are. It's about it's Ustalo. Ustalo. Because what is UWE without Ustalo, but more importantly, who are you without UWE? I know exactly who you are. You're just a scared little boy. Okay, listen to me, okay, Everett? Pinched a nerve, did I? <laughs> no. Listen. Point is, is that you're scared to face me, which is why you had me face Jason Atlas, which is why you had me give up the title. 
You come with these excuses because you think it makes you feel better. It gives you a reason to make you think more powerful than me. But the fact of the matter is, is that you're scared of me. I am probably one of the most dangerous people in the UWE. I mean, sure there's other people who are dangerous, Dirty the Chico, Rick Rios, you know, TJ Sakara, not Everett Creed. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, I am one of those more dangerous people. And you are scared of me because I'm the one who can keep interfering. I'm the one that the rules don't hold down. I'm the one the rules don't apply to. The rules you may not apply to, but when the game is on, so is Ustalo. But what happens when the power's turned off? What happens? Okay, you need to shut up. Just sign the damn contract. You right? wanted a match with Ever Creed. You know what? We can't. What? Is this a prop? Did, Did you really? Just a little prick. Did you really think that I would let some nerdy kid try to bust me from behind? Did you really think that I was just gonna let you spill hot coffee on me? Because when the UWE's done, Ustalo is dead, and now you're nothing more than the scared little nerd that everybody calls you Geek Squad from behind the scenes. You are gonna be a nobody. When I pin your shoulders down to the mat, Ustalo will be dead. And we will be going on with our much greater than satisfactory lives, and we will be dining with the kings and queens while you sit in mediocrity. Listen. While you play this little pretend world, thinking you're the best, you're only the best in your own kingdom. And you're tearing your kingdom down. You're getting rid of the UWE. You're not gonna be the king anymore, stupid. I don't need the UWE. But meanwhile, Ustalo will still be relevant. You think that this is the only place I'm gonna be? I'm in proving grounds. I'm gonna be a part of the NUW roster, BEW, what? Ever! I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be relevant, you're tearing yourself down, what I'm trying to save is the family that you had first started and you got rid of. Just face it, it's the low. when it's all said and done, and when you go back to being that scared little nerd, and you realize Stark Supremacy is living happily ever after, and everybody else in the UWE is gonna go back to their own mediocre life, you have failed them. I'm trying to wake up from this dream world and you want to stay asleep. Wait, I'll see you then, Gabe. Oh, oh god! Oh, wait, ever Creed with the fire poker! Creed assaulting Ustalo! You need to wake up! Wake up! Because I'm telling you right now, when I beat you, when I beat you, you're gonna be finished. You're gonna be bullied. You're gonna be vilified. You're gonna be afraid. Because you're gonna be all alone. The Stark supremacy is now passed you by. I will see you at Endgame, Ustalo, when the fire goes out. Well, there's a shocker for you. Every Creed, five seconds in, hits Ustalo with the fire poker like ding, ding, ding. Unbelievable. What a coward. What a pompous ass. Ladies and gentlemen, at Endgame, we are going to see the fate of UWE when Ustalo goes one-on-one -on -one with Every Creed. But in Every Creed's corner, the supreme leader, Angelique Stark, will be in the self-supremacy's corner. Will the UWE come to an end at the hands of the Stark Supremacy, or will Ustalo's flame keep the underground alive? Also, at Endgame, we are going to be seeing Johnny Reed versus Revan. Revan had a very emotional speech earlier on here, said that many people do consider Revan to be a joke, including Johnny Reed, who says, I made Revan relevant here in the UWE. We're going to see who really is relevant when Revan faces Reed at Endgame. And this is going to be a spectacular match right here. Also at Endgame, we are going to see the Underground Championship be defended in a triple threat match. Jason Atlas, the disease of Atlas is festering inside and he's targeting his former mentor, the Underground Champion TJ Sakara, who plans on setting Atlas straight but you can't forget about the difference maker. And that is exactly what Yankee is gonna be in this triple threat match. 
the maestro of the murder club, could become the last underground champion. And speaking of last and finality, we are gonna see the final chapter. We've seen him fight at Ultimate Redemption. We've seen him fight at Broken Glory. We have seen souls be wiped out of human vessels. We have seen men be buried alive. But we are finally gonna see the end of the epic saga of the Freak Show lifts and the last emotion, Novin. One last time, Novin versus Lips, and it's gonna happen on UWE's perhaps final stage. But also for the main event, ladies and gentlemen, it has been confirmed the two most dominant UWE superstars, perhaps in the history of the business, Rick Rios versus the Gunslinger, the UWE World Heavyweight Champion, Dirty the Chico, and it will be for the richest prize in the UWE. We are gonna see a confrontation between Rios and Chico right here and right now to discuss their match at Endgame. And it all started at the beginning of the Endgame series. When Dirty DeChico said that he wanted to defend this title at Endgame, and the first man to answer was the man that not only ended Cameron Jackson's UWE career, but retired Big Time Mike. And that man would be Rick Rios, who stole the World Heavyweight Championship after he screwed Dirty DeChico out of a tag match against Everett Creed and Nova. The question is, will Rick Rios become the world's champion at Endgame? I could hear it already. Why, Rick? Why would you turn on Dirty in the tag team match? Why would you run away with the title? I turned on Dirty, frankly, because I wanted to. I don't like Dirty. Dirty does not like me. It's how it's always been, how it'll always will be. And I saw two other men trying to take a match away from me that I deserve most. So you know what? I went along with the whole tag team thing, but at the end of the, at the, end of the day, I knew, just like always, it would be Rick Rios coming out on top. Now, out of spite, I stole the title, and I ran. But now, I know my hands shouldn't even be touching that title until I win it fair and square against Dirty DeChico. Now, am I undefeated against Dirty to Chico? Yeah. But that was a very, very long time ago. And not only myself, but him as well has evolved in so many different ways possible. So right now, I want the world champion of UWE to come out here and take his crown back. I just want to start off by say, by apologizing from stealing that title. But I am not sorry for punching you in the face and costing us that match. Because the way I see it, if that didn't happen, this right now would not be happening. So hate me for it. Hell, 
despise me for it. But you of all people should know by now that what I want, I get. And whether I have to work for it or I just take it myself. But like I said before, I have no right touching that title right now. You know, until I beat you for the third time straight. But like I said before, you came out, I don't know if you heard me or not, we both have evolved in so many different ways. So that undefeated streak, in my mind, doesn't even count. Because I'm a lot better than I was back then, and so are you. Hence why you're holding that title. Now, a lot of people are questioning, why, why is he being humble? Well, I think I'd like to know that too, Ricky. I'm sure a lot of people do. See, the, the facts are, I only care about myself, which is absolutely true. But when it comes down to earning something, it will be earned. And ever since I retired big time Mike, and in my opinion, I don't know how, my only explanation is this right here. Now whether or not anyone believes me, I could care less. Because I hate all of you, and you all hate me. And that's the way I like it. That means I have, don't have to worry about letting anyone down or especially let it, making you let them down or anyone else that stands in my way. And there's only been one thing on my mind and that is reclaiming this. Because it's been about three or four years and boy in my mind I deserve it now more than ever whether it's the last show ever or not. You know, Ricky, you, you use this word, you use this word, and it's a word I never use for myself. It's deservance. You deserve it. No, 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 see, I never once in my mind thought I deserved this title. I went out and I claimed it like a man, because it's mine. Because I put in the work because I've put in enough ass whoopings. Because when I got the call, I came running. You, however, don't do that. You're right. You are all about you. And that's beautiful. It really is. Damn right. Except for somebody who's been trying to reclaim this title for three or four years, this is the first time you've gotten this close. Maybe all about you hasn't been working out that well. You see, that's where you're wrong. Because for the past few years, that wasn't on my mind. You see, I had a lot of different things going on in those years. Whether it be being the best tag team to ever step foot in backyard wrestling. That's disputable. Disputable. You ask your crippled brother about that one. Well, if he could step foot, we'd put it to the test. Ah, well, too bad he can't. Too bad he's too busy sitting at home, jerking off to his cousin. Mm. Tag team, you turned on, by the way. Don't matter. And as far as I remember, you deserted your brother. So you want to talk about me turning on TJ. That's fine. Because I did. For the greater purpose. But you, I'm sure a lot of people at home were more disappointed in you than they were in me. And you see, as far as I can tell, you care more about what those people think than what you think of yourself. And you wanna, you wanna question me caring about only myself. Hell, I, I, th I personally think I'm one of the most rising superstars of the past year. And I didn't need a title to do that. 
and congratulations, you beat Everett Creed for the title. So hard to do. You see, until you defend that title against me and retain, that's when I'll give you your props that you deserve or you think you deserve. You can beat everyone else in this locker room. You haven't beaten me. You eliminated me in the Rumble to get to this. But not never in your life have you sat me down for the one, two, three. And I think you owe it to yourself and owe it to all these people watching that you can do that. You think about that. Because come endgame, whether it's me versus you, or you versus one of these other scrubs in the back, just know your biggest challenge will be me, and will always be me. So you want me in endgame? That's where you want to settle this? Hell, I called you out so you can take this back with you. You know why? What kind of person would I be to not let you have your last moments with your most prized possession? You want me to end game, Rick, you got it. That's it. Long story short. That's how we keep it. So come end game, main event. It'll be Rick Rios versus Dirty DeChico for the world heavyweight title. See you there, champ. Could Rick Rios be the next World's Heavyweight Champion? Could Rick Rios be the final UW World's Heavyweight Champion? Or will the Gunslinger retain his championship at Endgame? That is where we will see you next. This is Jack Thomas, hopefully not for the last time on Lockdown. Signing out.